Welcome back to another exciting video of Lights Out Cinema. Today I'm going to explain a 2016 American horror film called Train to Busan. The film mostly takes place on a train to Busan, as a zombie apocalypse suddenly breaks out in the country and compromises the safety of the passengers. So let's dive into the story, but before we start don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel to get an update on the latest content and upcoming videos. Warning, spoilers ahead. The story begins when a truck approaches a toll booth as it's being sanitized, with several workers cleaning the area in hazmat suits. The truck driver passes through the toll booth and accuses them of slowing him down, but the workers assure him that nothing is wrong, and that the area is just being sanitized as there was a small leak at a nearby nuclear plant. As he passes the toll booth, he is distracted by his ringing phone and accidentally runs over a doe. After inspecting the scene, he gets back in his truck and drives off. However, the doe staggers to its feet despite the crash and turns to reveal that it is infected. Meanwhile, in Seoul, Sukwoo is a busy fund manager who barely has time for his daughter Suan, let alone his divorce. After a stressful day at work and accidentally buying Suan the same birthday present he did last year, Suan reveals that she wants to visit her mother in Busan. Sukwoo is initially reluctant due to work, but his mother convinces him otherwise by showing him a video of Suan singing Aloha Oe at a school recital, she stopped singing in the middle of the song, which he couldn't attend due to work. Out of guilt, Sukwu books the next KTX train bound for Busan the next morning. Early in the morning, Sukwu drives Suan to the station, only to nearly crash into an oncoming horde of ambulances and police cars. As Sukwu ponders what could be going on, Suan reaches out the car window and catches an ember in her hand, prompting Sukwu to notice the burning building in the distance. He remarks that there's something bad going on, but drives to the station regardless. They board the train, which is also occupied by the tough working-class husband sang and his pregnant wife Song Kyong, a high school baseball team, rich but selfish CEO Yon Suk, and a pair of elderly sisters, In Gil and John Gil, and a homeless man who seems to be aware of the zombie situation. As the train prepares to leave, a spasming young woman boards the train with an enormous bite on her leg. Outside the train, the station manager then signals the KTX to leave, only to notice a group of people on top of the stairs of the station, screaming at something unseen. Suan watches through the window as the manager is quickly ambushed by a rabid human, which only she witnesses. Frightened, Suan gets up to go to the bathroom. In the lower-numbered cars, a train attendant comes across the infected woman, and she attempts to resuscitate her, only for the woman to complete her transformation. The zombie then latches onto the attendant's neck, who runs into the baseball team's car in a panic. The two then fall to the floor, now both zombies. The two proceed to attack most of the baseball team and create a horde of zombies in the process only four students escape, baseball player Yong Guk, his crush Jin Hee, and two unnamed boys. The zombies race towards the upper compartments and infect everyone in their path, Suan unwittingly walks towards the lower ones, looking for a bathroom. Sukwu awakens and notices that Suan is missing from her seat. He then receives a call from a co-worker, who informs him that violent riots have erupted around Korea. Soon enough, a group of panicked passengers from the lower compartments rush through past his seat, screaming and running. Now realizing that Suan may be in danger, Sukwu runs in the opposite direction and sees Suan standing right in front of an oncoming horde of zombies. He grabs her, and they are chased by the horde, but Sukwu successfully reaches his compartment and attempts to barricade it, nearly locking sang and Song Kyung out in the process. The survivors struggle to barricade the door, then realize that the zombies do not know how to open it, and merely charge at the sight of humans. Song Kyung uses water and newspapers to cover the windows, which remedies the situation by causing the zombies to think they are not there. The conductor reassures the survivors over the intercom that the train will not go to Busan, but stop at Digu Station, as he has been informed that the military has been dispatched there. Yon Suk calls his company friends and asks about the situation at Digu, which Suk Wu overhears and deduces from it that all arriving passengers at Digu will be forcibly quarantined. He makes a private call to a co-worker and convinces him to pick him and Suan up separately so they won't be quarantined. The train then arrives at the abandoned Digu station, and Sukwu takes Suan towards the east exit where they will be picked up, while the others go towards the main exit. The homeless man follows Sukwu, having overheard his phone call. 
The three go down the hallway where they see a soldier in the distance. Relieved, Sukwu tells Suan to stay where she is, and he rushes towards the soldier for help, only to see that he is injured. The soldier begs them to help him before a horde of infected soldiers round the corner, trampling and consuming him. The rest of the survivors head out the main exit. Towards the bottom of the escalator, the survivors see a large group of uniformed men and realize the soldiers are all infected, and the deployment has failed. Several of the passengers are eaten and infected as they scramble back up the escalator and back into the station. Sukwu, still inside the station concourse and facing zombies, tells Suan to run. She does so and bumps into Song Kyong and Sangwa, who are rushing back to the train with the others. Song Kyong takes Suan and runs to the platform, while Sangwa fights off the horde with Sukwu, Yong Guk, and the two other baseball players. Once they manage to lock the exit door, they run to the train. Yong Guk's two friends are attacked and infected when they reach the platform. Meanwhile, Jin Hee, Yon Suk, and a few others have successfully boarded the train. Song Kyong and Suan are also boarding when a glass bridge above the train shatters and sends zombies raining onto the platform. One of the zombies falls between Ingil and John Gil, separating them. Ingil is forcibly dragged aboard Jin Hee's compartment, and she watches John Gil, Song Kyong, and Suan run in the opposite direction. Song Kyong, Suan, Jong Gil, and the homeless man barricade themselves inside a bathroom in one of the lower infected compartments, while Yong Guk, Suk Wu, and Sang Wo successfully get onto a safe compartment. Sang Wo calls his wife and realizes she is trapped in the bathroom with a few others. Unwilling to leave them to die, the three of them begin fighting through the lower compartments to rescue them. In the process, they discover the zombies are blind in the dark and only react to sound. They use this to their advantage and manage to rescue them, and they all run together towards the first compartment, where Yon Suk, Jin Hee, In Gil, and the manager are. Yong Guk texts Jin Hee that they have rescued the survivors and are headed towards her compartment. When she happily tells the others, they react with hostility and decide to lock the door to their compartment to prevent the group from entering. With the door locked, Yong Guk attempts to break it open, while Suk Wu and Sung Wo struggle to keep the zombies from entering on the other side. Realizing that there isn't enough time, Sung Wo tells Suk Wu to take care of his wife and leave him behind to distract the zombies. Suk Wu tearfully apologizes and lets go of the door, dragging Suan and Song Kyong towards the barricaded door. Before he is consumed, Sung Wo manages to tell his wife the name he chose for their unborn son. The locked door is broken down and the survivors pile into the compartment safely, there is a second door inside the compartment, which they close, although Jong Gil is not fast enough and she is eaten. Realizing that Sung Wo and Jong Gil could have survived as well if the group hadn't barricaded the door, Suk Wu angrily punches Yon Suk and demands to know why he did such a thing. Unwilling to answer, Yon Suk lies to the others and insists that Suk Wu and his allies are infected. Instilling fear inside the initial group that barricaded the door, they force Suk Wu and the group that just entered the compartment, now joined by Jin Hee into the hallway between their compartment and the conductor's car. Once they are forced out, Yon Suk and the others use their neckties and shirts to tie down the knob and prevent them from coming back in. In Gil, still shocked and silent from seeing her sister die needlessly, notices Jong Gil's face in the crowd of zombies in the door window. She tells her infected sister that she lived a long and fulfilling life, and realizes that the compartment group's actions have led to her sister's death. Out of anger and defeat, Ingil opens the door, allowing the zombies to flood the safe compartment. The survivors inside the hallway can only watch as the group is eaten inside the compartment they see shadows of the passengers desperately clawing at the door they just barricaded in a cruel twist of events. The conductor receives a radio notification that Busan has succeeded in holding off the zombie infection. However, as they approach a station before Busan, the train is cut off by debris on the track. The conductor informs the remaining survivors on the train over the speaker that he will find another train on an unblocked track to drive to Busan and that they should follow him, but wishes them luck, as they will have to exit the train and survive crossing the zombie-filled tracks. He exits his cockpit, and finds an empty path, successfully discovering a cargo train. He starts it up and begins going down the track towards Busan, searching for survivors on the tracks. Suk Wu and the others exit the train, and unbeknownst to them, Yon Suk has survived the horde of zombies in the compartment, by hiding in the bathroom. 
he also hears the conductor's announcement and fights his way out of the compartment, but several zombies continue chasing him as he gets off. Meanwhile, Sukwu's group is making their way to the cargo train. Suddenly, a burning freight car rushes towards them, and Jin He and Yong Guk are separated from the group when the runaway freight rams into the cars of a nearby train, which falls and blocks their path. They go into one of the next train cars to cross over to the other side through the door, not noticing that Yon Suk, who is being chased by a zombie, is following them. Yon Suk enters the car and throws Jin He behind him, sacrificing her to the zombie. Yong Guk fights the zombie off and collapses to the ground, cradling the spasming Jin He in his arms. Yon Suk ignores them and manages to pry the door open and runs towards the cargo train. As Jin He chokes and begins to turn, Yong Guk begins to cry, asking why fate had to be like this. He apologizes to Jin He for not telling her how he felt about her, as she fully turns and consumes his face and throat. Yon Suk runs towards the cargo train, but twists his ankle on the tracks, and one of the zombies following him manages to bite his ankle. The conductor rushes off the car to help, but Yon Suk betrays him and throws him aside to the zombies like he did with Jin He. He ignores the conductor's screams for help as he boards the train alone. Meanwhile, the homeless man, Suen, Suk Wu, and Son Kyong are on the other side of the wreckage, trapped under a train full of zombies. The windows of the train threaten to collapse at any moment. Suk Wu finds an opening under the train and begins to climb under it, but a part of the train collapses and seals the hole before the other three can make it through. The impact also shatters a window, and a small group of zombies tumble out and crawl towards the three. However, the homeless man sacrifices himself to the zombies at the last minute, allowing enough time for Sukwu to pull the debris away, and for Song Kyong and Suen to escape. They run towards the cargo train and get on the outdoor platform of it. Sukwu approaches the cockpit but backs away when he sees Yon Suk in the conductor's seat, milky-eyed and infected. He initially shuts the door, but Yon Suk opens it in spite of being a zombie the infection has not reached his brain. Yon Suk approaches Suk Wu and begs him to take him home to Busan, speaking like a little boy and reciting his address and the name of his mother. Suk Wu tells him he is infected, and Yon Suk is momentarily shocked, and he weeps, but within seconds, he is fully turned. Suk Wu begins to struggle with the zombified Yon Suk and nearly falls off the ledge of the car. Suen screams on the other side of the car platform, which attracts Yon Suk and he attempts to attack Song Kyong and Suen. However, Suk Wu intervenes, and his hand is severely bitten. He manages to throw Yon Suk off the car but notices his injury. Aware that he will turn very soon, he seats Suen and Song Kyong in the cockpit and tells them how to use the brakes once they get to Busan Station. He then tries to leave the car, but Suen begs him to stay and reveals that on the day of her recital, she did not finish singing Aloha Oe because she didn't see Suk Wu in the audience she had been saving the song for her father. The two have a tearful farewell, and Suk Wu holds Suen's small hands in his for a moment, before throwing them aside and locking himself out of the cockpit. Suen begins to scream and cry for him to come back. Recalling his happiest memories of cradling her and holding her small fingers and toes, as he did in the cockpit before, the infection takes hold, his eyes going white and veins going dark. However, in spite of being fully zombified, Sukwu continues thinking of Suen and he smiles happily towards the sky before falling off the car and onto the tracks, it is left ambiguous as to whether this was due to his body spasming, or him jumping off the car in an act of suicide to keep Suen and Song Kyung safe. The train car finally arrives at the tunnel leading to Busan Station. However, the track is blocked off with debris. The two exit the car and begin walking down the tunnel, not aware that they are being watched on the other side by the Busan military. One of the snipers reports their approach to his superior and is told to shoot them down, as they cannot tell in the dark whether they are infected or not. Just as the sniper is about to pull the trigger, Suen begins to mournfully sing Aloha Oe to rally the exhausted Song Kyong to walk to the end of the tunnel. Hearing her song, the soldiers realize they are not infected and rush to their aid. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest content.